I'm working on building a down-firing subwoofer enclosure with the goal of staying small and keeping the subwoofers hidden and protected from cargo. The box is built, but we can't just leave it as wood. We need to wrap it. I want to show you some advanced upholstery techniques for finishing up this subwoofer enclosure, and I want to see how this box sounds once installed with a listening test. I'm Mark, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the show where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install your dream car audio system. Here on this channel, I do gear overview videos, I do lessons, and I do build log videos like this one. So if you enjoy this kind of thing, I hope that you would consider subscribing. Without further ado, let's get our wrapping materials ready and get started. Started. To get the wrapping process underway, I'm first going to wrap this wooden piece with vinyl. The material I've chosen is this black vinyl that matches the interior of the vehicle. When you're wrapping with upholstery vinyl, you want to make sure that you use the right adhesive. In this case, this is what I'm using. I'll put a link for you guys down in the video description. This adhesive is no joke, it can be dangerous for you, so I'm wearing my respirator as well. I use an inexpensive chip brush to brush the adhesive to the front side of my insert. Now this adhesive is sprayable. I do have a video about that that I'll link up in the corner of the screen. By using the brush, I can get just as good of results as using a sprayer. I just don't wanna get the sprayer dirty because I'm only wrapping this one piece. The key to using this contact adhesive is we must apply it to both the vinyl and the wooden piece. I also want the glue to be dry. I want to be able to touch it with my hands and not have any residue left on my skin. I can then carefully position the piece on the vinyl and start to push that vinyl onto the piece, locking it in place. To really add some firm pressure to lock the two together, I use this wooden roller. Now I can flip everything over and apply adhesive to both the sides of the piece as well as applying it to my little rabbited groove that I had made earlier. Wrapping the inside of this part is definitely gonna be the most difficult part of this process. What I need to do is I'll make several cuts that will allow me to pull the vinyl tight into these corners. I'll then use my handy pry tool to really apply some massive pressure onto those little fingers and lock it into the adhesive on the back side of that rabbited groove. After doing that all around the shape, I can use the corner of that groove as a guide for my knife blade. I repeat this process for both of the areas that have the rabbited groove. Those rabbited areas are where the edge of the part is actually exposed and not tucked into anything else. For the location on the part where it does match up with another part of the box, I just trim the edge of the vinyl flush. Here we have an up close and personal look at our wrapped vinyl piece. In the meantime, I've press fit the acrylic pieces that we made in the previous video into this wooden piece. Now I can move on to the advanced carpet wrapping process of the rest of the enclosure, and for that, I'm gonna be using this Super 77 adhesive. Just like any contact adhesive, I apply it to both surfaces, give it time to dry, and then I use pressure to lock the carpet into place. Because this box has this large curved corner, it's a little bit more complex to wrap without having any wrinkles. So I have to pull the carpet tightly over that corner, and then I'm gonna start pushing it into this groove that we made earlier that allows for carpet relief. To see how I made that groove in a little bit more detail as to why, check out the previous video. In the meantime, I'm using a roller tool and the pry tool to push the carpet material into the corners of my insert on the top, and I'll trim that away using a knife as well. I also cut the carpet away using the groove for my relief cut, so now I just need to apply this last piece to the back of the box. Again, I'll push it into that relief cut and then make a final trimming pass. Now I can carefully go through the process of wiring the subwoofers and mounting them to the enclosure. And I want to do a listening test, so keep watching. I'm going to show you the finished box and do a listening test in a second here, but really quick, I want to show you a cool test tool that I've been using from show sponsor, Audio Control. This is the new Audio Control DMRTA, and this is many tools built into one. We can connect to it with a computer, or we can connect via a Bluetooth signal by using the ACBT24 and use a mobile device. So there is a ton of testing we can do with this device. We can connect to the speaker wires of an OEM vehicle and we can measure the voltage. 
we could see the signal response coming out of an OEM amplifier, an aftermarket amplifier, measure the signal. We could also connect to a microphone and measure the audio signal on the RTA graph. We can use it as an SPL meter. It has a built-in polarity checker, oscilloscope to check for clipping. This thing has it all. There's really a ton to go into about how to use the DMRTA. I'll be covering that in an upcoming video. In the meantime, you can check out details about this device that I'll be using later in the video down in the video description. So here it is, guys, the completely wrapped and finished down-firing subwoofer enclosure. Let me give you a few looks at the finished product here. While down in the corner, you can see that I'm installing it into the vehicle and making my connection to the subwoofer amplifier. And here we have our finished look installed into the vehicle. I really like how the top turned out here, how it matches the mat, as you can see. Also, if we take a look at that brushed wood grain effect that I did on the acrylic, you'll see that that matches the insert pieces on the dash. Of course, I have the logo on there. I've got my grill mesh, so nothing can kind of roll up underneath there and affect the subwoofers. Everything is completely guarded. Let's do some testing to see how this sounds. So here's the test setup here. I have a microphone, which is connected outside of the vehicle to my DMRTA. I'm going to have the camera microphone, which I'm tapping right now. That's going to be inside the vehicle, but I'm also going to show you a separate shot that shows you what the bar graph here on the RTA is looking like as we're playing the music. Now, I know a lot of people were curious about how this was going to sound. I mean, after all, it is only two 10-inch subs and they're down firing and they're sealed. Not exactly what you would normally do if you wanted a ton of output from a system. But again, remember the goals behind this system were to remain stealthy, kind of remain hidden, remain out of the way of cargo so we can still put stuff in the back if we need to and uh, still have some good sound quality. And I think we accomplished that goal. Let's try another different song real quick. This has a little bit more of the punchy bass. I'm happy, definitely some great sounding bass. In an upcoming video, I'll be making a custom panel to completely cover the amplifier location. And I of course have a bunch of other projects and videos in the works, so if you are new here, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. If you missed the first parts of building this box, you can check out those videos here on screen. A special thanks to Audio Control for being a show sponsor. Check out the DMRTA at the link down in the video description. And a special thanks to Anthony Bernard, Brian, William, Marcos, Michael, Jeremy, Doug, Steve, Emmanuel, Jerry, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. Thank you guys for making this video possible and thank you for watching.